Greetings, my name is Thomas, this is my travel channel, and this weekend I'm spending it in the German city of Görlitz, as well as the Polish city of Zagurzelitz. I'm visiting two cities in two separate countries, sandwiched together by the Nisa River. Poland lies a furlong to the east, and this is Germany. Unlike Berlin, Görlitz was never bombed during World War II. It houses over 4,000 registered historical buildings, far more than the capital. As you walk around town, you can immerse yourself in the spread of architectural styles for hours on end. Before East Germany was dissolved after World War I, most areas in and around town were grey. 700 buildings have been renovated and since 2013, Görlitz has received 10 million euros from anonymous donors. The town has very much been transformed and serves very well as a touristy town. Mondays, however, most attractions are closed. The town is a haven for retirees and thus has a somnolent feel about the place. Until 1945, it was one town. Today, the two cities couldn't be more different. So what attracts me to these places? It's the stark contrast between them in both affordability, size, architecture and lifestyles. Today, we're going to uncover a few surprises in and around the two towns. Let's begin with Görlitz. Look at this Art Nouveau entrance hall, for instance. It's got that sort of polished Soviet look about the place. I just love the spread of blues and turquoises. The two cities lie in juxtaposition along the German and Polish border, 51 degrees north and 15 degrees east. More info on that later. They are easily navigable owing to relatively flat terrain, clearly marked streets and prominent landmarks. I'm kicking off this weekend on Bursdorfer See, a particularly popular spot for nature lovers, less than 10 kilometers south of Görlitz. It's 7 a.m. in the morning, and I'm standing on the west bank of the lake. Most lakes, like this one here, served as a link night coal mining facility until they were used for recreational purposes. This one wasn't completed until 2013. The almost 10 square kilometers of water is also perfect for swimming. <laughs> Berlin Street is the main artery of Görlitz. It connects the main train station with the cafes, restaurants and shops. I love the fact that it's mostly pedestrianised. Strasbourg Passage finished completion in 1908. It's one of the more charming areas for shopping in town. This connects the famous Berliner with William Place, a quiet residential square on the other side of this passage. Görlitz is also considered the Hollywood of Germany, dubbed Gollywood, owing to the Hollywood blockbusters. These have included key films such as The Reader, The Book Thief, Inglorious Bastards, spelt with an E, The Grand Budapest Hotel, directed by Wes Anderson, and Around the World in 80 Days. Have you heard any of those? If not, I recommend watching them all. Department store, film venue for the inside of the Grand Budapest Hotel, and more recently a catwalk stage, Kaufthaus is the best preserved 20th century department store in town. It lies on the original spot of the first hotel built in 1717. As you walk around it, it's easy to see how this could have served as a retail establishment. Look at these giant stairways and area for the lift shafts. I just pray that if they decide to renovate it to serve as another superstore, they don't ruin its Art Nouveau style and wonderful fixings. It's charming. The roofs look like giant eyes. Whether that provides you with a feeling of comfort or despair, the uncanny designs for me are quite intriguing. Once an old pharmacy, Rat's Cafe provides aficionados of tea time a chance to ensconce themselves with sponge and cream. The 
Whispering Arch is one of the must-dos in Gurlitz. Okay, it's not likely to change your life, but it's a bit of fun. As you can see, it attracts many tourists from all over the world. One person stands on the ledge, while the other person receives the message on the other side. Named after a genus of plants, Acanthus is one of my favourite finds in Gurlitz. There is a small labyrinth of interconnected cellars for dining and the outside beer garden looks right over to the Nisa River. St Peter and Paul Church dominates Gurlitz and the spires can be seen from most points around the old town. The key attribute is the sun organ. 17 images of suns are displayed around the even length pipes, of which 12 sound. The uneven distribution of pipes are supposed to resemble the sun's rays. Located in Stadpark, the 15th Eastern Meridian Monument marks the central axis for Central European time. It was introduced to Holland and France by the Nazi government. This is what Greenwich Mean Time is to London Greenwich, but 15 degrees further east. This bridge is quite the landmark, not so much scenically, but historically. In 2007, Poland joined Schengen, making passage between the two countries fluid and easy. Before, there were checkpoints. You would have your passport checked and stamped before entering and leaving Poland. Can you imagine it? Commodities are cheaper in Poland, most notably with cigarettes, bread and transport. In conclusion, according to many sources, the cost of living is almost 50% less expensive than in Germany. I love Polish food and we're going across now to dine at my best kept secret, Jacob's Inn. Let's go. I'm so excited. I'm sitting in Jacob's Inn, which is my favourite Polish restaurant in Zagurzelec. I've just ordered a Polish pierogi mix, which includes potato-filled dumplings, meat, cabbage, and there's a little bit of mushroom with some spinach. One chiviets straight from the tap. The restaurant is located right on the river, and the dish itself costs 21 Polish sloty, which works out as about four pounds. It's very, very good value in here. The service is fantastic, and it's always filled with people. Inside is equally as alluring. We'll go and take a look inside in a minute. Um, it's a very, very traditional place, and um, I highly recommend it if you're coming to Gurlitz. So, let's we'll see what this is like, shall we? I'm going to start with the, um, start with the spinach pierogi. A bit of feta included. That's to die for. I love the way they smear the pork fat over the over the top. Wow. Let's finish with some geography, shall we? What's so different about these two cities is size and population. Gurlitz is four times the size of Zagurzelec, with a size of 67 square kilometers. It has a population of 56,000 people 
twice that of its neighbour, and yet Zagurzelitz has a much higher population density, and yet you don't really feel it when walking around at street level. That must be owing to all these commie blocks scattered around. Don't you think they're beautiful? Colourful at least. Places aren't just about the sights, but the feeling here is very, very real. No queues for towers, no tacky souvenir stores, just rustic charm. I came here at Easter once to see families carrying colourful eggs to church in Sunday Best. Some notable mentions that did catch my eye, however, were Park Ujajdowski, the Upper Lusatian Memorial Hall hosting concerts and exhibitions, Zagurzelet Cemetery with graves of over 3,420 soldiers and officers from the Second Polish Army during World War II. St. Joseph the Worker Church. This could pass for a secret headquarters for MI5. The Orthodox Parish of Saints Equal Apostles, Constantine and Elena, and the beehive-shaped houses on Zamiesko Lubanska Street. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and share if you like this vid and subscribe if you want more of my travels internationally. Auf Wiedersehen and Dobby Zenya.